Hey everyone, Peaceman coming at you. And today, playing around with mixed reality and really cool particles. And this is actually a custom particle system with a compute shader and a particle system material. And what we're able to do is provide each of these particles the position of our controller here, and they update their velocity and their position accordingly. So this is why I can do this like back and forth with them. And I've also added in this like neat little feature here where I can catch them if they ever hit the, um, the controller. And that's what these green dots represent. And they change their color based on the velocity. And so it's a lot of these things that you get with particle system, but a lot more optimized to use compute shaders and uh, materials to render them out as pixels. So really, really cool stuff. Looking forward to sharing this. And we'll be using a open source free project on GitHub as a starter template and then adapting that to work with this controller. So really love the effect and I can also just and swirl it around and it works really well in mixed reality because yeah, you can see these little particles in front of me but like also moving back and forth so let's just let me show this in unity and then we'll dive into actually building this out all right so here we are in unity and you can see same same deal where i can move the controller around i don't actually have the models enabled but they still respond to my right controller here and i can hit these and yeah it's same deal just a different perspective so let's dive into how we can actually build this in Unity. All right, so starting off here, I'm gonna actually go to this GitHub page. This is from Antoine Fournay, and it's called the X Particle System. You can see an image of it. It's like pretty magnificent. And we're just gonna go ahead and download this guy and unzip it. And I've actually already gone ahead and done that. So we're gonna just go ahead, pop back into Unity, and I'm going to use open project, go to open, and I put this on my desktop, and it's just the standard naming here. You can name it really whatever you want, and just select that folder, and you'll just have the assets project settings, so it might take some time to upgrade and then go get the library folders and set up everything set up. So once you do that, uh, go ahead and see you soon. All right, so here we are. We have his project set up. There's so a lot of folders here, but we're just going to go to the scene one. Let's just hit play to start it off with. So you can see here he has the particle moving around. And I believe this one, yeah, it's based on where you look in the scene. And as a result, the particles start changing and they get really trippy. He also maintains them to stay within this XY plane, which is also a very different choice than what we're going to actually be doing. So let's go ahead, stop that. And... Let's go ahead and open up the compute shader here. We'll also, for now, we'll actually not need the material shader, but we are going to need his script. So we have his C sharp script, and then we also have the com compute shader here. And although it kind of looks a little foreign and it kind of sucks that uh, Visual Studios doesn't color code this for you, it's pretty kind of clear what's going on. And I just as a heads up, I think there is a shader to color this. I just don't have it installed on my computer, but there is a way to make the syntax coloring work. So what we can see here is there are the struct here, which he uses for the particle to maintain position and velocity, which is perfect. He has a buffer here, which basically represents the array of all the different particles that you can use. He has the time between frames, and then he has a mouse position. And the last thing here is the main thread, which is basically controlling how many threads on your GPU you'll be able to use. So pretty, pretty useful right there. And we can dive into this a little more in detail, but we don't really need to right now. And then what we have here is, again, the same struct. So this is for consistency, but when you share, what ends up happening is this C-sharp script runs on your CPU. The compute shader actually runs on your GPU. So you need to have some shared way of giving that information from the CPU to the GPU and having making sure you have the same struct. And there's also the array somewhere, if I can find it, uh, this particle right here. This is what's basically being used to keep track of that particle system. So super important. And then you see here it gets set into the compute buffer. And that's where you're going to have that shared state of where all the particles are. So incredibly valuable. And then there's a bunch of setup code here. I wouldn't worry about this too much, but that's something to know. And there's also a set buffer on the material. And that material 
we can take a look at that a little later, but again, that's for rendering. So what you have here is really three scripts. One that is able to render these abstract data points into pixels that you see on your screen. Two, you have the C-sharp script run on the CPU that's synchronously telling the GPU what it should be doing. And then three, you have your compute shader here. And this is what's basically calculating where each particle should go. So what, let's now that we kind of have a basic framework in mind, let's go ahead and change it up a little bit. So if we go into here, we see that there's a delta for the mouse position minus the particle buffer. So mouse position is basically where your mouse is relative to the screen and how particles should move in correspondence to that. So why don't we just use a controller instead? So really, just all we have to do here is change that to a, a float 3 for the world position. And we're going to change this to one position. Perfect. Now, instead of casting our float 2 mouse to a float 3, we just have to say one position. Go ahead and minimize this so it's a little less distracting. Although, I guess it's it's gonna keep telling me <laughs> it's gonna keep telling me that um, all right so now uh, we get the direction that we need to go in and we need to get the length of our vector that we're traveling on and then once we have those we update our velocity here and then we update our position so we can add in those if checks that I showed at the beginning of the video but for the most part this is pretty much done the only thing we have to do really is set the wand position so in update, we'll see exactly what he's doing. So he does get mouse position, and then he casts that to an array of two floats, and then he sets them here as mouse position. So what we need to do is set this to wand position. We need to get the wand. So we actually don't need the mouse anymore. And so let's and add up here. Let's do a public Steam VR tracked object and as I'm typing this right now I completely realized there's a reason that it's not auto completing and that's because we actually need to add Steam VR. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So go to the asset store and real quick like let me go ahead and add Steam VR. All right, so, yep, we need to add Steam VR in order to actually make this work. Of course, you, the OpenVR already exists as a part of Unity natively, but if you want to use controller support, you do need Steam VR. So let's go ahead and import that in. Awesome. So now that we have Steam VR in here, and let's go ahead and just reload everything, it'll now find our Steam VR tracked object, which is perfect. And instead of this, what we can do instead is controller, let's just get the vector 3 pause equals controller dot transform dot position. And what we can do here is pause dot x, pause dot y, and pause dot z. And the reason we have to do this here as a a float array is because when, when we have it as a float array, it that's how the GPU can recognize it, as opposed to a vector three, which has a lot of methods and extra data that the GPU doesn't really need to see. So with that, we've pretty much kind of finalized how this should look. And really the only other thing we would need to add in here is a bit more control into our script. And that's just adding in a few if, if, if cases, but let's first test and make sure that this works. And actually, it's not going to work because we actually do need to do some setup in the scene. Let's go ahead, accept everything. And once we do that, just delete. Uh, let's go ahead, delete that. Add our prefab or our SteamVR prefab. Uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and on the camera, we can change this to a solid color and make it black or like some gray. Either way really works. Maybe something like that. And then let's go ahead and on the main camera, we're actually gonna delete it, but I first wanna copy our script here and put that on the camera rig. So here we go, paste this new, and let's go ahead and add the left controller onto our script because we added that reference. 
At this point, we are pretty much now set. We can just go ahead and delete the main camera because otherwise we're going to spawn in some random position. And let's dive into testing this out. Alrighty, here we go. So you can see here we have our controller. Our left controller now is basically controlling where these particles could go. And I have there's a velocity that they inherit and they are moving quite quickly. But we can already see that we have a bit of control. It depends a lot on where this controller is placed. That should move it backwards. We can move it closer here. That should move it forwards. And we can now just, if we add a couple more ifs, and wow, looking at this on the screen, it's, uh, it's quite a mess. But it works. That's the important part. So now, really the only thing we have to do is go ahead and make sure we add a couple of if cases in. And that should just make sure we can control the particles a lot more. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Back in our script here. And so first obvious check to do is just let's go ahead, add an if. So the nice thing here is that pretty much your standard coding principles will work within your GPU level. So think of this basically as a piece of code that can run in parallel on all of these different particles, specifically 256 at the same time, and it's going to just do these sm small calculations that you are accustomed to. And there's a bit of setup involved, but you get to run your code on 256 things at the same time, which is a huge improvement in speed. So we're just going to go ahead here, add a check to basically make sure that the length of our velocity, if that is greater than, let's say, 5.0f, then we're just going to set the velocity to zero. Set that to 0 0.f. Now, one thing, if you're coming from C Sharp, you have to add these 0.0f's, otherwise the GPU compiler can't handle that. So that's something important to note there. And we can also add a, if we want to add that point where I'm able to capture, and actually, sorry, this shouldn't be 5.0f, this should be the direct the direction of where the velocity is headed times five so that we cap the velocity at five so that things move a lot slower because if you notice from what we just tested everything was like moving in a crazy crazy speed so let's go ahead add a normalize if i could ever type normalize there we go normalize the velocity and multiply that by 5.0 now, 5.0 is kind of an arbitrary number. You can make this whatever you want, really. But it works. And the other thing we want to try out is we basically want to make sure that if we our velocity is ever going to hit our controller, then we got to make sure it basically stops. So for that, what I'm going to do is add another if up here. The position, obviously, of this just like in code kind of matters, but... For now, it's fine. Uh, it's the one position times our calculation here for the velocity. So this times or plus. Actually, probably the best thing to do is this velocity times delta time minus the current position. If the length of that is... Yeah, I mean, you can be a little arbitrary here, but let's say like 0.1 length is less than 0.0.1f, then we're going to reset our velocity. And this is what I was actually, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit here, but this is what we intended to do for resetting the velocity back to zero. So basically what we're saying is if the one position minus the where the, the next frame's velocity and the position is going to be is less than 0.1, as in they're like super close together, then what we want to do is just reset the velocity to zero so that you kind of slam that particle right into the controller. And then this, this step right here, we're basically capping the velocity at 5f, and then we just update the position. So with this, we should have a lot more control over where our particles go, and we can just test that out. We are in Unity testing it out, and you can see I have a ton more control over where these particles are going. And I can like swing it back, I can swing it forward, and I should, if I can get them, if I can touch them, I should, there we go. 
and I'm able to capture some of them also. So that works out really well. Boom, you can capture it. Um, one of the things you'll notice is that these things are really, really tiny now. And that's just because part of the problem was the initialization, uh, which is again, part of that C sharp script where I'm, let me just show that right now. We have our initialization here. They actually just initialize the X and Y. You can also initialize the Z and that'll give you a bit more variety on where things spawn, but we, which we can actually do right now. Just go ahead and copy and paste that. And now if we go ahead, run this here, pretty much what we had, this is tied to one controller. And it shouldn't honestly be that hard to modify this to work with two controllers. You just have to have that reference and then code in what exactly you want. But yeah, it works. And you have to play around with it a little bit, play around with your velocity settings, play around with your um, your stopping settings. But all of those stuff work and they work surprisingly well. And it's definitely a lot of fun to just go in and have 3,500,000 3, particles that you can play around with, stop them however much you will, and just have a lot of fun with it. It's Particles are really cool, and I highly recommend playing around with a lot of them, and you should get some really cool effects. So that pretty much does it for what we wanted to show off in this week's tutorial. Hope you guys had find this really useful, because I, I had a lot of fun making this. And yeah, that pretty much does it for this week. So make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on social. But other than that, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.